In some ways, a glove box is a pretty simple piece of laboratory equipment. As the name suggests, it's a tin can with some gloves and a window. But that would really be too simplistic because this glove box does more than just providing a place to work. It also must be a place that is devoid of oxygen and humidity. To do that, it must be sealed from the outside, preventing the atmosphere that contains icky, gross, life-giving chemicals from making their way inside and ruining everything! Typically, the weakest links in this system are the gloves. They're the place where all the work happens. As such, they're constantly flexing and moving with the person using them, which leads to wear and tear. They can get punctured accidentally by pipettes, broken glass, or even needles. Ugh. And we've seen a dozen other ways that these poor gloves can get hurt. Here are a few places where you can expect to find holes in a glove. The fingertips, especially on the right hand since so many of us are right-handed, the knuckles, and the cuff where the glove connects to the port. When a glove is compromised, sometimes it's enough to tape up the hole and get back to business. But other times, the number of holes or the size of the hole is just out of control. That's when it's time to replace the glove. First off, if you find yourself dealing with a glove that has catastrophically failed, you should take action. By catastrophic, I mean a hole that has formed that's more than one to two centimeters in length. If the hole is along the forearm area or in the hand, you can grab the glove and twist it until it sealed itself. But if the tear or hole is close to the cuff that connects to the port, then you'll just have to follow these steps quickly to stop the leak. Find our secret weapon inside the box. The porthole cover! The porthole cover is a round metal plate with a small knob on it and a rubber o-ring. You'll usually find it near the freezer in our glove box. In this case, the glove that needs to be replaced is on the far side of the glove box. Mitch will work quickly to move the porthole cover over to the other side of the glove box, and using the neighboring glove, he holds onto the knob and shoves the metal plate firmly into the port of the compromised glove. Working quickly, that takes only about 30 seconds, so don't panic. Just be smooth and calm and avoid creating any other safety issues. The knob on the plate is more than just a handle though. This knob turns, and when it turns, it will compress the o-ring, causing it to form a seal between the port and the plate. This is the key to sealing off the entire glove box. The knob should be tightened until it is very secure, much tighter than the antechamber doors would be. Once it's in place, feel around to make sure it's evenly spaced inside the port, and then give it a good tug. Before we go any further, you need to make sure it doesn't feel loose. It will soon be the only thing that protects our glove box from the outside, because the next step is to rip that glove right off. On our glove box, the gloves are attached in a very simple way. The glove itself is stretched over the port in the window, and two large rubber o-rings are placed over the cuff of the glove and sit in ridges on the port. To remove the glove, Remove both of the o-rings, one after the other, and set them aside since we'll use them later for the replacement glove. You'll notice that Mitch is putting on nitrile gloves before he removes the glove box glove. On the inside, these gloves probably have more than their fair share of chemical contamination, and Mitch is even folding over the end of the glove to make sure nothing gets out before the glove heads for the trash can. Here, we see the rare three-armed glove box in the wild. The port is sealed, and we can get the replacement ready. The two ridges on the port where the large o-rings sit are also pretty easy to see at this stage. The gloves on our box are left and right-handed, and if you have the choice, make sure you grab the correct glove for the correct side. It should not look like you're about to shake hands. But what if you only have one glove, and it's the wrong-handedness? All is not lost. Knowing your symmetry is going to help you. You can turn a left-handed glove into a right-handed glove by flipping it inside out which just happens to be the equivalent to the S2 inversion operation. The magic of enantiomers!
Once you've got the glove you need, it's time to put it on the port and get back to business. Stretch the cuff of the glove over the port and make sure the lip sits firmly in the small ridge that's closest to the window. Before going any further, it's worth checking that you put the glove on in the right direction. Think about how you want your hand positioned and make sure the glove is rotated to match. You'll be pretty bummed if you realize it's on upside down or backwards. Now that your glove is in the upright and locked position, it's time to squeeze as much air out of it as possible. Right now it's all normal breathable air, you know, the bad stuff. Mitch is rolling up the glove, and once he gets to the cuff, he's tugging at the sides to allow the excess air to squeeze out. The glove is then ready for a little bit of nitrogen. Mitch will use the neighboring glove to get a hold on the porthole cover and loosen it until the glove starts to fill with nitrogen from inside. You can see the glove starting to inflate. Once the glove is almost back to fully inflated, the portal cover is tightened once again to separate it from the box. Why did we go through all this trouble? Why didn't we just open it all the way up? Even though we squeezed as much air out of it as possible, that wasn't all of the bad air. If we took the porthole cover off at this stage, the oxygen level in the box would likely skyrocket into the hundreds if not thousands of parts per million. So the glove is inflated but then separated and we'll start the process of squeezing out the bad air all over again. We'll push the air out and refill with nitrogen from inside at least three times, but preferably we're looking at five cycles just to be safe. This process of removing oxygen and humidity just isn't as thorough as the antechamber can be. Once you finish cycling, you can slide the two large rubber o-rings back onto the cuff to secure the glove. After the last cycle, I would suggest getting a purge started. It's not going to be a great atmosphere like we normally have. You can now remove the porthole cover from the inside, put it back where you got it, and enjoy life with your fancy shiny new glove.